Hello again. I have long despaired of the direction in which this country is moving, but I honestly don't see why we should be so determined to export our loopy fads and fancies abroad. Still, in this country, police forces boast not how many criminals they have caught, but rather how many homosexuals they employ. We do rather have homosexuals on the brain here, and it was, I suppose, inevitable that eventually we should start trying to get other countries to share in this national obsession of ours. Just to remind viewers, until well within living memory, homosexuality was illegal in this country. In the description to this video, I give a link to a chapter from the memoirs of William Merrilees, who was Chief Constable of Lothians and People's Constabulary in Scotland during the 1960s. After he retired, he published his memoirs in 1966, which were entitled The Short Arm of the Law. The link will take you to a chapter of this book entitled The Campaign Against Homosexuality. In it, the former Chief Constable details the efforts he made to eradicate homosexuality in that part of Scotland for which he was responsible. It was, as they say, another world. I do not say that this was a good thing. And I am happy that men can now engage in whatever activities they please without risk of a police campaign against them. But it does seem to me that there might be a happy medium between the police fighting to stamp out homosexuality on the one hand and on the other driving around in cars painted in rainbow colours and boasting about the number of homosexuals they have managed to recruit. These days, it is those who are not keen on homosexuality who tend to be targeted by the police. For example, street preachers have been arrested for reading out loud from their Bibles in public and quoting the scriptural prohibitions relating to homosexual behaviour. Some countries, though, are not very keen on promoting that kind of thing, and in some places homosexuality is still against the law. There are countries like that in the Middle East, and Qatar is one of them. There are also countries where alcohol is forbidden, and that too is very different from this country. If you're going to work in such a country, though, it makes sense, and it's also polite, not only to abide by their laws, whether relating to homosexuality or alcohol, but also not to criticise them openly and ostentatiously. This is ill-mannered. The English football team are going to be playing in Qatar, which means essentially that they are going to that country to work. And yet, such is the mania in this country for going on about homosexuality and promoting the practice at every touch and turn, that the captain of the England team has somehow been persuaded to wear an armband with a rainbow heart on it to indicate his own preferences. Actually, I'm not very well up on this. I just checked on Wikipedia and it seems that he's not a homosexual after all, which makes his decision to engage in propaganda for the cause of gay rights all the more baffling. <laughs> I do rather look forward to a time when people stop going on quite so much about changing sex and committing sodomy as though such things were the most important part of their lives. Neither activity is to my taste, but I'm happy for others to indulge in them to their heart's content if they wish. I am not at all clear though why the head of our national football team should want to go to somebody else's country and make a point of displaying symbols associated with homosexuality. Why would he do such a thing? Mind, doesn't he have form for espousing fashionable causes of this kind? Wasn't he one of those footballers who was kneeling in memory of George Floyd a couple of years ago?